and welcome to the Puma in the Cage, our weekly chat show here at Puma Comedy, where we interview every week three brilliant comedians. And today I'll be chatting to David Lewis, Davina Bentley and Daniel Rubinstein. And first up today is here with me. Let's start clapping, cheering and whooping. He's a very good friend of mine. He's a brilliant comedian. He's here with us, David Lewis. Hello, David. Thank you so much for coming on the Puma in the Cage Hello, show. Hello, Romy. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I'm very pleased to be here. Very, very, very much. good to have you here. How have you been? Cool, I've been okay. I've been okay. I've been, I hope to think I've been coronavirus free. I've been healthy enough. I've been eating a lot. I've been drinking a lot. Uh, and uh, I'm all right. I am getting there day by day. How are you? How's <laughs> things with good. you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm enjoying this uh, lockdown period, to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> I was. I, I was in the beginning. And then I... Do you know what? It's all sort of pinned to the weather. When the weather's nice, I'm having a great time, to be fair. Like, the, the weather was brilliant when it started and everyone was losing their shit. And I was just, like, in the garden, uh, sunbathing. And then it went bad. And then it started to get a bit nicer again. So that just goes to show that regardless of any pandemic there is in the world, I am so fucking shallow. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All I need is some sun. Yeah, sun and I'm happy. that's all we need. Yeah, me what too. Do? Me too. Do? I need some sun, which is not yeah. always the case here. But yeah. This is true. And have you been doing something new during this lockdown? Uh, have you started, like some people started cooking, uh, some people oh, started gardening and stuff like that? Do you know what? I've done a bit of both. If I can turn, I don't know if you'll be able to see uh, the state of my garden, but I've planted some grass and it's about 20% of it has grown. Uh, so you could be very optimistic or very pessimistic about that. Uh, but <laughs> I'd say uh, I've tried gardening. Uh, I've sort of done some cooking, but that's ended up just... Uh, I don't know what it's become. Fortunately, I live with uh, my partner and she's a very, very good chef. So I'm sort of taking care of... Uh, You're the sous chef. The, I'm very much the sous chef uh, <laughs> in every imaginable way. Um, you know, until our relationship can no longer take me not being able to cook, I'm sort of riding my luck. I don't know when that's going to be. I'm, I'm looking over. She's smiling at me knowing that it's about, <laughs> I think by the, look, by the look of it, about three weeks more. Uh, and, then it and, and then it becomes untenable so uh, it. <laughs> but it's all good but it's been okay like I, I, I've been trying to do that you know it's bit by bit by bit yeah yeah I, I, no, I've oh been yeah the one the one thing we did sorry to interrupt you the one yeah. thing we did we remind is we bought a tandem bicycle so we are now like I didn't know how to put this such complete London wank it's unbelievable <laughs> so we've got a tandem bicycle and we go around on the tandem bicycle now. Uh, that's our way of getting around to save some money. So we don't, we're not going to get in the tube, obviously. Uh, we haven't done for a couple of months. Uh, and now we've got a bicycle, for the, a tandem bicycle for the summer. But how so, the tandem uh, bicycle? Is it that who is yeah. uh, in the front is the one that actually pedals and the one at the back pretends? I don't, that's a very, very good... Uh, do you know what? I'll ask my girlfriend after this if that's how it works. But I'm presuming we're both doing quite a lot of work, though it does feel like I'm doing like, a lot. Going up a hill is quite stressful. It's a good test of a relationship, having a tandem. Uh, so, uh, but that's been good. It's been all right. Nice. No complaints. No, I never tried yeah. a tandem. And, okay. um, and so you, you, you are a comedian, obviously, but well, you're also a journalist. I am. Let me put this down so I get a bit of a better one. There you go. I am a journalist. Yeah, so I started off um, doing journalism about... Do you know what? I'll give you the sort of very short backstory is that I never really have worked out what I want to do and I still can't... I was 40 years old uh, in November and I still can't 100% decide what I want to be uh, with my life. So I started off after university of just traveling for ages because I just wanted to get on my, you know, get my suntan going as discussed. Uh, and then I was living overseas in different places. And then I was teaching overseas. I couldn't, I never really liked any of it. And then just accidentally just started, I found a course that was interesting uh, and became a journalist. I've been doing that for a while, but um it's not as interesting as I thought. I thought every day would be like Tintin, you know, Tintin, the boy reporter. No. In in Italian, it will have a different name because every country has a different name. In France, Tintin. it's Tantan. 
Ah. You know the comic book. Is it the what? No, Tintin. The only thing I can think of is the dog. There is a you dog. You mean Snowy? With the... the white, exactly. The white dog, Snowy. But he's called something different in every language. I know it's Tintin. I think it's Tintin. Yeah. Tintin. Then. Tintin. So <laughs> there you go. So I always so he was the reason I became a journalist because he was the boy reporter who went around the world breaking stories and getting into exciting, uh, you know, situations. And sadly, being a journalist in uh, in uh, 2020 London is sadly nothing similar. And, and do you have waiting. any any like uh, weird uh, <laughs> articles that you have had to write? Jesus. Do you know what? Once, this is a strange article that I once did, right? Once, there's this competition, the, the cricket competition. I don't know if, you would, if you're a fan of cricket, but there is a cricket competition called the Ashes, which is the most yeah. famous competition, even if you don't know about cricket. Yeah, yeah, I know, know that, that one, right? yeah. And the Ashes is literally a small urn with from like the 1870s or 1880s, right? And yeah. it's a one-off. It's like priceless, right? Mm -hmm. And for an article, I had to look after that for like two days, right? So I, I was given that to look after. And they said to me, if you lose that, you will be fined 50,000 pounds or something like that. They said, literally, not, not the newspaper, but if you take this and you lose it, you will... <laughs> We will find you fifty thousand pounds. So I was like, fine. Oh. So I slept. I essentially slept with it uh, in the bed as well. So I was sleeping <laughs> with the ashes to make sure that nothing bad happened to it, because I had to take that to another place for a photo opportunity and a, a write up. So oh. I always remember that that was one of the strangest things. Quite soon after I started sleeping uh, with the ashes, which was very very strange. Um, I've done lots of weird things. I did lots of, sort of travel journalism as well. So you ended up going to all these sort of bizarre places. I'm getting into these weird situations and with PRs and it was all sort of mad, but it's all quite fun. I, I enjoyed it. I've been doing it for like 10 years. I don't know if I'll do it for another 10 years, but I enjoyed while it was, while it was happening. And so, and, 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 uh, and in the comedy scene, right. what, right. what can you tell me about like a weird gig or, or a funny oh my God. episode? Where to begin? <laughs> so many. Where, <laughs> where to begin? Um, when I started doing comedy, I just remember that someone was bitten by his dog during my set and it was almost like a relief uh, that that had happened because it was all going so badly. <laughs> so I just remember a bark and a man sort of screaming, th thinking he was enjoying the comedy, but actually been bitten uh, <laughs> by a dog. Um, where else? I mean, sort of so many sort of funny, weird things have happened. It hasn't really happened for ages and ages and ages, like these sort of horrendous things. I know people sort of clearing the drinks up during it, walking on stage while I'm on, you know, we yeah. probably all had that, just taking drinks of everyone, uh, doing the rounds. But have you been doing gigs uh, in this lockdown? Do you know what? I've been doing, I've been doing a few. I've been doing, I've done, um, I did a couple of charity gigs which is which is sort which i don't know but it's sort of fun I, I sort of i don't be negative about it. i'm sort of i'm liking everything because it's just the new normal we all have to sort of accept mm -hmm. for the time being this is how it is so they were sort of quite bizarre and you we got some big like one of them we had quite a lot of audience we had like 150 or 200 people mm -hmm. which isn't bad i think but it's sort of so funny isn't it because you're just still in your front room and the cat's like wandering around by my feet jumping on the computer uh so I've been doing a few. I did the roast, which is the Angel Comedy um, Friday night show, which is really, really fun. Yeah. Which I used to do a lot there of. And that, that's actually really, really funny. And I always watch that. That's sort of, you know, the one constant comedy thing that I'm always watching now, like every Friday. But you also yeah, but no, running your own gig. The I've big done a few nose. things. Yeah. And you know what I did? I started running my own gig again on Thursday. So it, we, we normally have a gig every Thursday and every Monday uh in Highgate and then in Soho on Monday nights and you know clearly now we can't do that so I've taken it online to see just to sort of work out what we can do with it really it sort mm -hmm. of started off being like sort of a everyone gets a couple of minutes each but then it just became people talking and stuff and it was yeah. quite fun do you know what the funniest thing about 
some of these shows it's just the backgrounds people choose i mean that, i judge someone very much by their background not here because this is a professional <laughs> operation you've got with puma comedy in the background but people have got all different weird shit in their backgrounds <laughs> so uh zoom i suppose at least gives you a chance to look into someone's psyche and work out you know why someone has you know uh, a beach is their background why someone's got like jeremy corbyn while someone's got you know what i mean the yeah. cast of home and away or something i don't know it's all very weird so um but no I, it's, it's been you know it's i don't know I, I, it's been interesting it's been interesting okay david thank you so much for being on the show <laughs> my pleasure my and, absolute pleasure uh, yeah and um audience that is watching us uh, look out for the big nose comedy do every thursday night on zoom 8 p.m which i'm afraid to say clashes with your show but <laughs> maybe they conflict between both of them on zoom on a thursday night yeah you know so, here, what are you gonna there. do yeah what, you, you know that's the new normal now you yeah three comedy three comedy shows at once <laughs> So one on your phone, one on your TV, one on your tablet. So it all works itself out. Yeah. But, um, But mine yeah, is in I'm Italian, sure. so it doesn't really clash in a way Done. with the audience. Done. With your... Well saved. So. All right. Fair enough. No worries. <laughs> Lovely Fantastic. to speak to you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. On. Thank you. Bye, David. Bye. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Next is here with us, Davina Bentley. Hello, Davina. Thank you so much for coming on The Boom and the Cage. Thank you very much. I like this cage. <laughs> nice girl. <laughs> a feline cage. How are you doing, Davina? I, I'm pretty well, thank you. Um, yeah, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, keeping myself busy. <laughs> I like your, um, it's quite 80s, your background. Is it? The yeah, brick it's wall? Like, it's like a Michael Jackson video. Oh, okay. That's Peter Phillip. It's yeah, like... <laughs> hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Just like the brick wall and the graffiti sort of style yeah. humor comedy. Yeah. yeah. And I can disappear can disappear. And reappear. I, lo I love this, um, all this background thing that you can do with, uh, with Zoom. I don't know how to do it. So I'm just sitting here. I'm one of the few people who, who aren't surrounded <laughs> by like, you know, don't put up like a desert island behind them. <laughs> okay. I can send you a, a tutorial. How to... Oh, thank you. <laughs> It's very easy. It's very easy to do. And uh, it's, uh, what have you been doing this during this lockdown? What have uh, um, I got a job? Um, exciting. I um, am now a lawyer. Well, I was always a lawyer, but now I work for a firm. But they, I work four days a week, so I can do one day a week doing comedy. No. Nice. Very exciting. I have been also doing sketches with my friend Adam, and our sketch group is called Dregs and they are very silly and a lot of them are like corona themed mm -hmm. um and so they're all up on davina bentley comedy on instagram and tell me a little bit about you i saw some of them and they're really nice tell me a bit more about your sketches so what i do is i get cross at someone in real life or like someone will piss me off and instead of dealing with it and being like hey man you really piss me off i'll like get out my phone and write a little sketch about what a dick they are Like one sketch is about when you're single, people set you up with like the worst people, like the fucking worst. And I wrote that sketch because I was at a dinner party and I was talking to like a really douchey guy who was like really drunk. But we had one thing in common, which was like his dad was a lawyer. So we knew like lawyer people. His dad was quite a famous lawyer. So I was like, oh my God, how cool. Tell me about your dad. And opposite, some of my friends were like, oh, Oh, a fox flying. It's like, no, man, I'm just talking to a guy. <laughs> so things like that. So I just get pissed off at something someone does and then write a sketch about it. Um, so, yeah, they're all up on Davina Bentley Comedy. And then we did one about how um, people have, like, people about, like, conspiracy theorists and how, like, when someone says they believe in 5G or shit like that, they tend to be, like, two steps away from being, like, 9-11 Jewish conspiracy theorists <laughs> but that's my experience of conspiracy theorists they tend to be like very close to being like so tell me about the Rothschilds it's like I don't fuck it up <laughs> man those are all do you know what I mean it's always the same guy the guy that's always like oh did you know that like SPF causes cancer is the same guy that is like you know every Jew got an email that morning <laughs> so they're about fun stuff like that um, yeah. but they're really fun to film yeah it is fun uh, do, do you 
Do you also do the whole editing or? Yeah, I have learned to edit. And like you, I am using these really annoying YouTube videos where they're like, hi, <laughs> welcome, please like and subscribe. Please welcome to my video editorial. And it's like, why is this 40 minutes long? And you're teaching me to like cut one, you know, like the smallest thing and you just have to get to the meat of it. But I re it's been really nice learning that new skill. Um, although my friend Adam, who I do my sketches with, is always like, he's such a bossy boots. He's like, cut one second off that bit, do that, change that. And I'm such a public school girl that I'm like, okay, I'll do that now. Yeah. <laughs> like I never learned to do new things. So it's been nice learning to edit. Yeah. So yeah, so this lockdown has been um, helpful in, the, in this sort of way. You learned these new things. Yeah. I wouldn't have learned editing. I mean, I... It's also been like, yeah, a ball ache, obviously. But, you know, I'm healthy. People I love are healthy. I've been pretty lucky. I don't work in medicine, so I haven't, like, had to have a horrible time, like, trying to save people. Lives, yeah. Save, like, yeah, just good, been at home, like, editing my lame little videos. <laughs> yeah. My sister's never... a doctor, so she's been, like, pulled back into the sort of, like, firing line. Mm -hmm. And, um quite hard to be like well I've been editing a funny video with my friend Adam <laughs> how <laughs> about <laughs> that <laughs> how about that you may have saved some lives but I made someone chuckle yeah. I got a thousand views <laughs> <laughs> who's the best daughter now so you <laughs> <laughs> but the, you you are like on two kind of sides I mean you are a lawyer by day which is something really serious and then a comedian by night I know well, and I'm so scared of the two part the the, of the past I've like I it's the fear I live with because I love comedy so much but I do love being a lawyer and I love rules and I love advising people but there is a level of like you know there's a certain way you have to be when you're a solicitor and a certain way that I am as a comedian and they probably don't match up and at one point you know something will probably have to give but there's I mean I don't know there's a lot of lawyers there's a lot of comedians who used to be lawyers so <laughs> I think of any. but do you bring your you can't bring lawyer stuff into comedy no because it's not funny like <laughs> Like it's comedian lawyers. I mean, lawyers can be quite funny, but like it's not funny, man. <laughs> it's not funny. There's no funny thing about like two companies having. I mean, offices are funny, but all offices are funny. Like, because people in offices are like behave kind of like dickishly, but that I don't really do comedy about that. Like, I try and keep the paths. Yeah. Never cross. Separate, separate, separate street. Yeah. Although my living fear, and it has happened. I did this Jewish gig once. And they fucking hated me. It was Jewish Comedian of the Year and they always hate me even though I really smashed it. They were, just don't like me. But um, I was doing the Jewish Comedian of the Year gig and the head of litigation at a very famous firm was sitting in the audience. So as I was doing my really rude bits, I was like, oh, and it's the head and I'm a litigator. It's this famous lawyer who I've met before. Hi, Jeremy. And um, he was so lovely and he came up to me after the gig and was like, you were so funny. And I did all my rude stuff, all my swearing stuff. Um, but that was the only time the paths have kind of crossed and he was so cool about it. Uh -huh. um, and he was funny. He's like a funny guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I just, I just always fear that if I ever do like a big gig, like if I ever did, you know, do Top Secret again, that, you know, some, some people I've worked with would be in the audience. Mm. That would just be my nightmare. You can roast them. Yeah, but I would just be opening like a... I mean, you're probably right. I would just be opening a whole side of myself that is like... <laughs> different <laughs> to the other side yeah. of myself. <laughs> <laughs> the side. Oh, this anyway. has become like my comfort plant during this chat. This is my new plant. Is it, <laughs> is it, is it fake or is it real? It's real. Oh. It's real. I'm you're so nature. You're doing well. Anything... I mean, I bought it a week ago from Lidl. Oh, okay. <laughs> or maybe less. It's half a week old from Lidl. Uh, I managed to kill a cactus. So, so. Aww, not green fingered. No, no, not maybe at all. Keep the plants then. Yeah. And I've been trying to grow some stuff in the garden. It's growing, but just because what, it's doing. What are you growing? 
some flowers and some herbs oh. and yeah, uh, coriander is 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 growing. Is it now. growing? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, but it's just because I put it there. I put some water and that's it. And that's <laughs> enough. That's okay. Yeah, so far so good. Let's see how long it lasts. Yeah, maybe next time you do one of these podcasts, you'll be like, all oh, the coriander's dead. No. <laughs> no coriander. No coriander. It's okay. You can just go to Tesco and buy some more. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> and yeah. we, we survive. Yeah. Anyway, Davina, it was really, really nice talking to you. It was uh, lovely to talk to you, Romy. I invite all our viewers to check out Davina Bentley Comedy. All her videos are very, very funny. Uh, is Do you have one coming out soon? We do. It is going to be released imminently. 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 Um, so check it out. Check, check it, it out. out. It's going to be up soon and it's going to be very silly. Um, and also check out Hey News videos as well, uh, which I'm in lots of their videos and they have a Facebook page. Fantastic. Um, Fantastic. Thank you so much, Davina, for being on the show. You. Have a, a good rest of the evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Our last guest for today is Daniel Rubinstein. Hello, Daniel. Thank you for Hello. coming on The Boom in the Cage. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, just uh, putting on my religious hat. Um, and I think uh, there's, a, there's a bit of a religious theme to my, uh, my conversation tonight. Oh, OK. <laughs> and uh, what kind of hat is that? Um, it's a cardinal's hat. I Not see. a real cardinal's. Um, I see. Or less. <laughs> nice. I've been doing, uh, I've been learning more Gregorian chants. Um, as I say, I, I've become more religious. Um, there you go. Oops. Your book. <laughs> my, book my bookshelf has uh, collapsed. There you go. Uh, there we go. That's better. It, it, a lot of people are fooled by that. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where was I? Yes, yeah, sorry. The Gregorian chanting. So, uh, you hear me? <laughs> That's all the thing, you know. <laughs> all <merrier. laughs> is that all the but, thing um, that you this believe? Is a, this is a true story. That I bought this hat in the 1980s at a jumble sale. And it's a designer hat, but I thought that you wore it like this. Mm -hmm. uh, which is like a new romantic. I don't know if you know the new romantic thing with uh, everyone dressed up. Oh, in the we... 80s okay yes yes yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so i did a little bit of that very mild including this hat but what i didn't realize was that you actually are supposed to wear it like that yeah like a yeah. sicilian yeah. mafioso yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense doesn't it <laughs> yeah and then you so... need that i don't know what's it called in uh, in english in italian it's called <laughs> scaccia pensieri it does <laughs> oh yeah i think i know yeah yeah and maybe a shepherd maybe some sheep <laughs> you need to bring, bring some sheep in but talking of sheep as you know we've been um Co cooped up inside so i was going to remind people of uh, the countryside and the animals in the countryside so i'll just do that a little bit let's meet our first animal it's the cow <laughs> that's uh, the cow and uh, secondly the chickens il polo in polo. Uh-huh. That's uh, the chickens, of course, and then uh, old Shep the sheepdog. <coughs> uh, I'm afraid the old Shep's been contaminated by radioactive plutonium. 
<laughs> so uh, that's the end of my. Uh, but uh, this is the the stylophone. Yeah. I don't know if um, you know the Italian people know about the stylophone, but I'm sure we do. Instrument. I'm sure we oh, do right. know about right. the stylophone. Yeah. <laughs> I, I come from a long line of stylophone players. I mean, not a family or anything, just a long line. They were in a in a long line. And then uh, a queue. <laughs> but no, it's very um very versatile. You see, you can imitate the didgeridoo. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, the bagpipes. Um, So, uh, yeah, the bagpipes, the didgeridoo, and uh, the stylophone. So, uh, yeah. You uh, can have a whole orchestra there, just yeah, in one yeah. little portable instrument. It's so handy. No, no, it no. won't work. It won't no. work. It would be terrible. It would be <laughs> appalling. It would be catastrophic. catastrophic. But, uh, have you ever tried no. to learn uh, to play vegetables? Uh, well, it's funny you should say that, Romina, because I did uh, investigate that, but it was too difficult to set up. But you can play vegetables uh, electronically. Um, you put electrodes into the vegetable, uh, uh, maybe an aubergine, you know the aubergine? Yeah. Um, or the zucchini, of course. Uh -huh. uh, nice kind of, you know, vegetables. And um, you can then um, manipulate the electrodes to make the vegetable sing. Uh, of course, not really singing, of course, um, giving the impression of, I, I think it vibrates the vegetable. I, I don't want to get too um, sort of uh, vulgar with this, but uh, I think it <laughs> Does vibrates Does it make a vegetable. sound or it just vibrates yeah. like the phone? When a... I, I, thought it, I thought it made a sound like a balloon, you know, when you get a balloon and you yeah. squeeze it. Yeah, like a fart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Essentially. Like a just, fart. I would have to turn up with a bunch of vegetables and a table, and I, I can see it all going wrong. Oh, it's badly wrong. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I was saying about the religious theme, I was thinking, you know, the monks, uh, you will know this before uh, printing, the monks used to write illuminated manuscripts. Uh, you know, they used to sit and write. Right. Well, uh, I mean, you know, then they invented printing, but then they invented film and photography and TV. And that's very, very different from printing, isn't it? I'm amazed they invented that. Amazed they invented that. I mean, so I think historically the monks, the monks would carry on. The monks would have had to carry on with the TV and the film and the photography as monks, you know, because it never got invented so uh, you'd have the monks do you know um films you know the hunt for, for, uh what's it the monk for red october sort of james bond films you know um octo monk view to a monk um Skyfall so uh, monk. yeah I, I mean it's amazing. yeah exactly <laughs> casino <laughs> monk <laughs> uh, monk raker there is a uh, whole new yeah, so, is is a double oh seven on a new level yeah yeah so uh, you can see there's been a religious theme tonight with uh, religion and animals and I... vegetables uh tonight uh, and books of course books and books, uh, I, and books. Read many of them. so yeah, have you yeah. have you got any projects coming up are you going to learn some new tunes with your stylophone yeah well i want to learn properly the carpenters you know the one calling occupants of interplanetary craft calling occupants of interplanetary most of summary craft or something then uh the the aliens come in and the, they say we've been inviting your heart so of course they're the the aliens of course in the middle of the, the song yeah. uh, so I, so if you know the song, you you know the bit I, I mean. 
yeah, 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 uh, yeah. No. I love carpenters. I love. All ah, right. Well, I, I, I don't, you know. I okay. Know. <laughs> um, but not all the songs, but you know, yeah. the most popular ones. Yeah, I like yeah, them. Yeah, I like That's, them. Um, I learned a few of those. So that that is my my project. Your project. And I don't know if you know the uh, the song MacArthur Park. Someone I mean, I'm terrible. In the rain, you know, someone left a cake out in the rain. I don't think that I could take it because it took so long to bake it, and I'll never find the recipe again. Oh no, that one. I, I don't know if you know that one. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, I can't place it. <laughs> ah, the uh, same. I, um, because I'm terrible with names, uh, yeah. with titles and stuff. Ah, right. uh, I need to hear really... the song. Otherwise, but yeah, yeah I can't. Yeah. Well, it's a, a really um, silly song. Mm -hmm. It's about s someone finding a cake in the rain. and um, Be water. Uh, it's... <laughs> it's got yeah, a soggy bottom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very. They they did even when it was written, um, yeah. and uh, but it's got about seventeen chords in it. So yeah, it's mainly music, mainly music. Right, Daniel. Where we can see you, uh, obviously online and nowadays. Where where can our followers uh, find you? Tell us. Well, I've got a Facebook page. Uh, start. Oh, that's that's not going to work. Um, I've got a Facebook page. Um, <laughs> Stylophobia with Dan Rubenstein uh, and also a YouTube channel, Stylophobia. So it's those two things. So you can see me play proper tunes like Rasputin by Boney M and um, uh, Poker Face by Lady Gaga uh, <laughs> and uh, Born to be Wild. Because I am born to be wild. You know, I, I'm very wild, very wild person. You know, I, I you know, I, um, I, I I don't I don't wear slip-on shoes. You know, I tie them up and uh, you know with laces. Um, rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, rock and uh, roll. Well, it's that the other way around, actually. Uh, slip-on shoes are more rock and roll, aren't they? The more wild. The more wild. Um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I, uh, I, there's nothing in there. No. <laughs> I thought something was coming, but no. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Danny, for coming on uh, the show. And uh, we'll check out your YouTube channel and all your Lady Gaga and Gaga songs. I uh, look forward to it. Pleasure. And yeah. thank you so much again for coming. And uh, oh, I will see oh. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye. And that was it for today. Oh, I know. Time flies, doesn't it? But we'll be back next week. So I'll see you next Wednesday at 7 o'clock here on the Puma Comedy page. And in the meantime, have a good rest of the week. Bye-bye. <laughs>